Good day everyone, a very warm welcome to you as we listen to this quite cheery music I suppose. My name is Nick from the ZX Spectrum and we're looking at a game called Moonstrike published by Mirasoft in 1987. What's the story behind this? Well it's a vertical scroller shooter, the year is 2078 and you must destroy this uh, well Trojan Tachyon Vortex super machine that's been created by Professor Humphrey Bogus and hidden around the back of the moon. So we need to go to the moon and uh, blow everything up, there'll be a variety of aliens or technology coming at you and here we go in this rather wide looking ship it's not using very much of the screen it's not using hardly any of the screen it's using well practically none of the screen anyway but anyway we're in this box like picture frame uh, view bit uh, you see our lives in the bottom right I've died already uh, score above there right let's see how far we can go so Professor uh, Humphrey Bogus has got a bit of a sense of humor and he's invented all this crazy stuff there's a light bulb trying to kill us there now the cross in front of my ship represents um, the area where we can bomb if you hold the fire button down for a length of a time it will fire a bomb rather than shooting forwards it's quite monochrome this one uh, we're quite tight in but it's not impossible we can move around now if I don't get very far um, I do have a poke for infinite lives, but it does tend to muck up the game about around about stage 2 or stage 3, so we might try our luck here. But hopefully, I'm showing you what the game would have felt like on your first or second go. It's never expert gameplay, and you might not have seen this one. I don't think it's that well known. From the soft of mirrors, the mirror soft. If you had this one back in the day, then let me know. Now, the scrolling is just about at the right speed. As I say, it's being let down by the amount of the screen it's using, which is hardly anything, as I mentioned. Uh, I don't think it would have been one of my go-to games. It's totally outclassed by games like um, a Flying Shark. But never mind. Um, right, here we go. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Uh, the ship could be a bit narrower, for my mind. It might have made it a bit better. It doesn't need those two wing things on, perhaps. There's an end-of-level boss. Now the levels don't actually end, one flows into another one and you just continue onwards. But anyway, I've lost. We'll try another go without the poke on this time. So the year's 2078, we're on the moon and we're just blasting stuff. If you are in the year 2078 watching this from the moon, then comment below. I'm uh, presuming that YouTube still exists at that sort of year. There's a smiley face, we know what we do with smiley faces. We either fly past or try to blow them up because they're obviously up to no good. A very narrow band of the moon. I'm getting a little bit, a bit bored about this game already. Uh, this is a 48k version, I think. Uh, there is a 128k version, which, um, you know, plays roughly similar. Yes, as a kid, I would have played this a few times. I prefer to have got this free or given uh, by a friend, but um, I wouldn't have liked to have spent too much money on the thing. Uh, precious pocket money, as it was back in the day. It's one of those. I mean, it's instantly forgettable. It won't feature many people's top tens, but, you know, the graphics are sort of like, okay. It's got the feel that it's been put together a little bit by it with a construction kit. The graphics are going to repeat quite a lot, I would have thought. And the fun will be to see what the end of level bosses are going to be like each time. As I say, like a silkworm, a silkworm uh, or swiv, um, each level runs into the next one, so it will just continue scrolling upwards until you complete the game, and then no doubt might go back to level one again. So let's just try and get off level one intact. This will be my last go, then we'll put the poke on. But as I say, I think that it will corrupt the game at a certain level. At least we'll try and see it a bit more if we can do. Right, so launch a bomb. Come on, I've got one life left. There we go, it's blown up. Oh, did I survive there? I might have survived there. Yes, that blew up before it got me. So, level two. Buckle my shoe. I do like that cyan green thing going on. That is probably the nicest bit of the game. Uh, the graphics do look good from the screenshots, I would have thought. Right, let's go. There wasn't a sequel to this game. We were soft had a mixed number of games, which we covered quite a few. 1987, the Commodore Amiga was just getting his very basic games in, and 16-bit in general. So a, this is like the key over that uh, time. I don't know if this come out on the Commodore Amiga. I'll have to try and look that, up, that one up, but I doubt it. Oh, uh, I'm just thinking about games like Attacks on the Amiga, which is quite an early one, I think, as well. So let's put a poke on. Let's see how far we can get into this thing. As I say, I don't think I can get too far beyond what I did already before the thing mucks up. But, you know, it's fairly interesting from a historical point of view, but not really a game you want to... Um, track down now 
the, the background's quite busy, there's quite a lot scrolling vertically and that is an achievement in itself, that's well done. I think it's more of an impressive coding game than an impressive game to actually uh, play. Uh, probably as an adult you'll respect it a little bit more for what they've done here, the explosion sounds and the uh, the graphics when things explode, you can appreciate that now. As a kid that was probably lost on you a little bit, you just want to see how far it played and try and um, absorb yourself into the game as much as possible. There's a light bulb there flying at me. If you are Professor Humphrey Bogus which uh, started all this thing going then let me know uh, how is your Tachyon Vortex super weapon and what was you planning to do with it? Yeah, evil evil professors and scientists are quite uh, plentiful on the Zenic Spectrum. Uh, a lot of games is either some mad scientist has gone out of control, or some princess has been kidnapped, or your girlfriend, or your boyfriend, or something. Uh, now we're here to blast. They always send it in a lone ship on its own. Why can't they send an attack fleet? The Earth is really underfunded. They can only ever afford one ship. Has this been sent from NASA or SpaceX? I don't know. In 1987, I don't think SpaceX existed, did it? Elon Musk. Elon Musk for that. If you are Elon Musk, then comment below. But you think we're in a computer simulation, don't we? Hopefully the computer simulation isn't this. That's all I can say. Right, and also if you're watching Elon Musk, if you want to sponsor the channel so I can go full time forever, any donations will be appreciated. I don't think Elon Musk watches random ZX Spectrum um, uh, videos. I don't think he does. I might be wrong, but uh, yes, big hello to him. I like everything you do, sir, and Tesla and that, that, la, 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 la. Right, good. A million pounds should do it. Well, that, that's done. That's that's the ch <laughs> that's the channel done. Then that's that sorted out. Boom. Right, Mirasoft eighty seven. What was you doing in nineteen eighty seven? I was um how old was I? Thirteen. So I was probably in um, my second or third year of senior school. That's how it works. I'm in the middle, just coming up to doing exams. Um, I don't think this game would have stopped me from doing my homework. You know, I don't think I would have got addicted uh, that much to the thing. Uh, I think it was at the sort of the time my friends, um, rich friends, were getting uh, Commodore Amigas and stuff on the very first year, playing games like Defender of the Crown and Wings and all those sort of stuff. I don't think Wings is a game I've reviewed yet, but anyway, that's one. What's this? 20 cents coin. We're going past some, like, arcade machines now. Right, keep going. Keep going and going. That hasn't corrupted yet, so that's good. Maybe I'll get off stage two. We'll see what the end of level boss is on stage two. Keep an eye on the scenery. If you recognise any of these craters, the Lunar Sea, I don't think it's really actually based on the moon that accurately. It's just the moon, and they've just done rough graphics. It's a white moon, it's not a grey moon, because ZX Spectrum can't do grey, but it does put white and black next to each other. Stage 2, continue. Continue. Infinite lives now, if you, if you weren't paying attention. Uh, it's a vibrant moon, isn't it, there? He's got space... This is what the moon will look like in 2078, I suppose. I think it's getting... Yeah, that's it. It's corrupting. The game is corrupting. Corrupting alert. It's not drawing the background properly. Oh, dearie me. It's all going silly. So if you was playing the game properly, you wouldn't see this actual corruption. It's just the poke I put in has caused this. It's got me to a certain point, and now it's gone a bit, little bit. A little bit pointless. But anyway, Moonstrike. A lot of games with the word moon on it, so it might be hard to find this. Moon defense, moon alert. Put your favorite moon game below. It's frozen. We don't have to reset the thing. Right, away we go again. I put in a slightly different poke here. I had two alternative pokes for um, infinite lives. We'll see if this one corrupts it as well. I'm suspecting that it does. It's unfair to cheaters, but this is giving you a little bit of an idea whether you want to play the game. As I say, if you've got a spare couple of moments, I would say, yeah, track it down. I downloaded it for Spectrum Computing. If you push for time, then don't bother. If you've got a lot of other games to play, then don't worry. This is purely historical from a museum point of view. So a big thank you to all the subscribers who've subscribed to the channel. If you haven't already and you've watched this far into the video, please consider doing so because that helps me continue. But what really helps me continue is the members. So thank you, members. A massive, massive help to you. Quite a lot of work always going on uh, behind the scenes. You might not always notice, but it is. Keep this thing going. Uh, I work as well. Uh, wish I didn't have to, but there you go. So thank you. You're keeping me going, folks. It's, it's a big planning operation. A big planning operation. Right. It's a channel that puts out full-time content on somehow part-time hours available. Boom. Moonstrike. I wouldn't mind a remake of this one, which didn't corrupt and it's got a bigger screen and it's the, the, the background's coloured in, I wouldn't mind that. Stage 1. 
Right, this will be definitely be my last go, so we'll either get to level 3 or the thing will go wrong again. Stuff firing at you is quite slow, like a lot of these uh, ZX Spectrum games that go for the monochrome. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to see what's firing at you when it's like white on white or yellow on yellow. A lot of them favoured the, the yellow colours. Flying Shark is a prime, prime example, but do check out the review of Flying Shark if you're unaware of that game. Uh, much, much better than this. Uh, also 1942 and 1943, move a little bit quicker as well. But the, the good things about this game is, is the level of detail in the background and the smoothness, although it jerks occasionally, the smoothness of the background when there's a lot going on and it just doesn't slow down either. So that is quite clever in that respect. Yes, I, I don't think I could have sat down and uh, coded a game uh, like this. There we go, a bit of machine code involved as well. I imagine, boom. As a kid, I was a bit naive about things are programmed. I just thought they typed every single thing in, and that's why I went, my typing game didn't come anywhere close. I thought it wasn't that good. But it's all about machine code, which I knew nothing about then, and I really know nothing about it now. Well, what creates machine code? Some kind of assembler or something. Makes everything load quicker and run quicker. Have you seen the review of Zosnia's um, Lava 2021 we've done um, quite recently? Uh, you'll see that, that that is heavily sped up on the original game because they got better assemblers. Boof! Right, is this the bit where it's going to start uh, uh, crashing now? Going past these tank things? Kaboom! Great stuff. Yeah, there's quite a lot of ZX Spectrum games reviewed on the channel. Click check on the playlist or even have a, maybe a crafty type and search within the channel itself. Uh, you might find a game that you, you played back in the day. I keep discovering gems. We ain't going to run out of games anytime uh, sh uh, soon. Uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of games. Right, okay. So thank you to people that recommend games. But I really I really can't take any more recommendations at the moment. The list is, is way, way, way too big. So, But thank you, but no, no more, please. No more. Boom. Right, okay. And it's corrupted again. It's corrupted. The whole thing's corrupted big style. Yes, uh, so I, I suppose it's going to freeze in a minute, is it, like it did last time? But it's an alright game, Moonstrike. It's an alright game about being sensational, I suppose. Acceptable for the time, 87, maybe a bit late. If it was a few years earlier, it might have got a bit more play. But anyway, it's it's very average, this game, uh, but clever backgrounds. So I hope you liked having a look at that one. That was Moonstrike on ZX Spectrum, published by Mirosoft in 1987. Got any comments about this game, similar games, or anything retro, then please put that below. You're always more than more than welcome. Until next time, take great care of yourself and a very fond goodbye. Goodbye.